NASA wants to put a nuclear reactor on the moon by 2030. Yeah. So let's put aside the fact that we had the Secretary of Transportation stepping in as the NASA administrator Mm -hmm. to deliver this news. Let's put that off to the side. That's another story. They all wear a lot of hats. Let's also put aside the fact that we're looking at introducing a volatile, um, sometimes difficult to control energy entity onto the moon. You know, something went bad up there. That could, that could not be good. Anyway, the two big takeaways from this article were two of the bigger challenges that this would present. Number one being, um, in order for a nuclear reactor to work well, there needs to be a lot of water to cool it down. Yeah. So on the moon, <laughs> we're not so sure about, in theory, there's supposed to be a bunch of frozen water up there in a lot of these craters. Yeah. So the article talks about, well, if we're going to do this, we're going to need to figure out a way to understand where that is, if it's there. Yeah, where it is, and how it could be sourced. Uh, the other thing that I talked about is when rockets take off and land on the moon, kicks up a bunch of debris. Yeah. And it shatters stuff because <laughs> there's obviously no gravity there to keep it on the ground. Yeah. So everything it kicks up could potentially, when we're bringing in supplies to build the reactor, could kick up all this debris to damage the reactor. Yeah. So how do we figure these two things out? What this said to me is... <laughs> Forget the nuclear reactor for a minute. These are two very interesting things that in this age of looking more, let's call it pragmatically, as opposed to scientifically, at a lot of things that NASA is doing. It's the nicest way that's ever been put. 